Diabetes management is an ever-changing landscape and joining me now to discuss this further, Cos Sklavos, health strategist from Synapse. Thanks for your time. Tell me a little bit about the proposed changes to test strip access for type 2 diabetes, Cos. Well, all pharmacists know that uh, diabetes is a huge category. By 2019, it will be the biggest health cost burden. But the government's made an important change and many pharmacists have sort of, uh, because they've been dealing with test strips through the NDSS scheme, uh, a separately funded process, but from the 1st of July proposed, we'll transition to a direct model where the pharmacists get, get paid a dollar to distribute the strips and uh, the management of that will be through the wholesaler. So the actual logistical process will change. So there are, we still don't know all the details, so the key message for pharmacists is you need to watch this space. We, from the Pharmacy Guild perspective, we want all pharmacists participating and the government has an expectation that all pharmacists will participate. And that will bring all diabetes patients closer to their community pharmacy. So it's a huge opportunity. For a diabetic patient, it's important for the pharmacist to know their full journey. So if I know someone is on medications and they're not getting test strips or they're not with, um, they're not getting strips, then basically I know they're not testing themselves. So, you know, with obviously uh, even diabetes type 1 where, you know, we were, the research we, we went through in the Roche session yesterday, we were surprised, you know, we're talking 34% and some very low figures um, and in type 2 diabetes there's a huge scope for pharmacists to encourage patients to get one. That's the gold standard of self-management. It still will be the gold standard because um, HbA1c is a separate test which you can get funded through Medicare but that doesn't give you a visibility to all the metrics. Let's get started just to set the scene and you guys would know I love statistics. So just to give you a, a snapshot, I mean you hear it but it's something I think you need to go back and remind our colleagues. This is the NDSS snapshot. Now, I am surprised how few pharmacists get this. I mean, we all participate. We're all going to be doing the diabetes scheme, especially from one, um, from 1 July, if you haven't already done so, um, in some states where the numbers weren't quite at 100%. But guys, this is out quarterly. It, it, there's a lot of richness of data. One of the things you'll, we'll tell you today is to get the data. Um, as at September, this, so even though there's a December figure since, but to get the accreditation we submitted early for this paper. Um, 742,000 Australians, 60 years or over. Um, obviously, as you can see here with diabetes, now there was 1.176 million registered with Diabetes Australia. So there, a lot of those are elderly patients with, as you'll hear in today's presentation, with more than one chronic therapy condition are in our pharmacies. I could almost guarantee you every single one of those people are regulars in your pharmacy. So we need to embrace them and really add a professional level of service. Um, obviously, we'd, we would expect a 100% hit rate with an NDSS scheme for type 1. But with type 2, it's interesting that 24% of type 2 diabetic, diabetics make up that number. Now, just some figures, because it's interesting, this is DA figures, but just in the last week, diabetes did a lot of media. Um, 100,000 Australians have developed diabetes in the last year, 100,000 Australians. Um, a common figure that you all know, because it's been at almost every diabetes lecture I've been to, is that half a million Australians are undiagnosed. But this is one that I thought, I'd, what I had certainly hadn't seen this figure, that apart from the fact that it's $6 billion a year, diabetes as a health condition, a cost to our uh, economy, and you can double that number when you add the uh, loss of productivity. Um, the interesting figure is that um, out of type 2 diabetes, which can, it can be delayed or prevented totally in 58% of conditions. So that was an interesting statistic. And the thing that we have to remind our patients is that many of these conditions that, or the complications they suffer from is from literally 10 or 20 years of either not being diagnosed or mismanagement of their medications or alike. So there's a lot of opportunities for us. Now, I, the SAND report is an abstract from some of the speech analysis and this particular subset from these practices looked at 2,600 patients from these 90 GP practices and that's where their weight was recorded. Of 248 type 2 patients that recorded weight and height, 133 or 53% were obese and 78% or 31% were overweight. Now Donna will talk to you later about the integration of uh, the weight category into your businesses in terms of the solutions that we build. But just be aware of that in terms of that's why we're obviously at risk as a community for diabetes to uh, its prevalence to increase. But it's also an opportunity because the thing that has changed over the last decade, 
and credit where credit's due with people like Tony Ferguson programs in pharmacies and others that have evolved since. The credibility of pharmacy as a weight loss destination has grown and that's why we need to embrace this opportunity. And there's also access to a diabetes module in all seriousness. If I haven't and Don hasn't inspired you to do this module, your team, then we've really wasted our time, guys, this afternoon.